We may wait from home across all the globe. Community. Eba mi ki le mi moti ke so jade. Community. If I was so up on ki agbara ya. Community. O shu shu a wo ki eri koga. Community. You need to in diversity. Community. Okun 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 we ile mi okun. Lobayo, the Obaro of Kaba. Oku, 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 we let me come. I was born to the Ajino Hill ruling family, ruling house of um, Lajo clan in 1945. I heard my early upbringing in this um, community, Kaba, in Oku. Land. I had my elementary education in Kaba here. That was at St. Mary's Catholic Primary School. In 1959, when I completed my primary education, I gained admission to St. Augustine's College, Kaba. I passed the St. John's uh, College where I had my HSC, which you now could, what they call the higher school certificate. And um, I participated in a lot of um, athletics um, competition or athletics meeting. I also participated in the Northern Nigeria AAA. And we, I was a uh, member of uh, the team that um, played the horses, horses shoot and um, the Phillips Cup, as they were called. And our school did very well through my efforts. By 1970, I graduated and the um, states had been created and um, I moved to Kwara State where I was recruited as an information officer attached to the, to the then governor as his press secretary. That was the beginning of my career. I worked in a number of ministries. It was funny now that my last when the last ministry where I served was the Ministry of Information, where I started from. I was in the Ministry of Information in 1985 when uh, the glory of God has appointed as the power of Kaba. And I, I'm grateful to God that during my time, God has been very faithful with us in Kaba. At this juncture, I want to delve on my private life. I married, I met my first wife a long time ago, 
In fact, um, she was more or less a cousin. Uh, someone who was calling me brother before. But um, later I fell in love with her. And um, it was funny. But after uh, lots of um, negotiation, uh, there was um, that agreement that we could marry. And we got married in, um, in the year 1975, December 1975, precisely December 27, 1975. We, we got married. And thank God, God has blessed us with them children lived happily before we came to the Kaaba and um, we are still living very happily and it, it had always been a surprise to many of my friends and those who knew me how I could come to take the position of uh, the Obaro as at the time I came in because they thought uh, I would not be able to stay at home. And I would like to be able to cope with the uh, the agent that are uh, within the community. But uh, thank God, I do believe that uh, it is a responsibility God has given me. And if you have the backing of God, um, there is nothing you, you cannot attain. Okay, 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 we let me We speak Yoruba and we believe we are descended from Ilefe, some from uh, Oyo, some from other towns from uh, of, of, uh, of Yoruba groups. But generally, we are all Yorubas in uh, open land. And that is why you see me in uh, Yoruba attire. Although we are grouped with the North. That was a, one of the mistakes of the colonial government when they came here. I think what actually informed their thinking we belong to the north was the fact that uh, there were no peace in our midst. But in terms of cultural, um, traditional, we have an um, alliance with, um, with, with the Yoruba culture. So, and um, I'm able to know all this through my my early stay with, uh, with my people. If I had school somewhere else, I probably could not have understood all these things. Even um, above all, the type of jobs that I did as a civil servant, I was a, I was a deal. So and I had that interaction with traditional rulers and the uh, community. Because in those days, as the deal, you were, you were heading a whole local government. Although in, in the early days, they used to call it NA. But at another time, it was changed to local government. What is being done now, uh, what you can now say are the responsibilities of the local government councils now. The chairman, the councillors, all others was just was the responsibility, single responsibility of the deal. He, that was the job of the deal, to manage the entire local government without councillors, without council, without anything. So that was the job we were doing. So by the time uh, I worked there, I was able to interact with um, the traditional rulers. I was able to interact with the natives. So. That one actually enhanced my performance as the Obad of Kaba. Because if I had managed a local government, I was the deal in Bogu, that is Kainji. And it, in fact, Bogu was the largest local government we had in Kwara in those days. And then in those days, as the local government, as the deal, we had to travel around the local government at least once in a month. It was incumbent of you to visit your local government areas at least once in a month. So exchange ideas with the traditional rulers, exchange views with, uh, with the natives so that you can know their problems. 
So by the time I came here, I was appointed as the Board of Kaba, and I was already conversant with the job. And then um, you can imagine how we manage a whole um, local government. Uh, I couldn't have been frightened managing a, a kingdom. At the time I came in, the community was uh, more of a village. But today, it is an opening, and I can boost up lots of development, both from the government, from the federal government, and then um, from the private individuals. And I'm eternally grateful to all these agencies that have contributed to the development of Kaba, and that has all made Kaba a, a beautiful place to stay now. I'm also happy to say that the most important thing, which is uh, peace, unity, and tranquility, prevails tremendously in Kaba. And I uh, can boldly say that in Kogi today, Kaba, open land, I suppose, is the most peaceful area that you can take of. In the selection of um, of um, the Barov Kaba, well, I it was the turn of my my house that I be selected. Really, my dad was the one that should have been selected. But God thought otherwise. Before the pronouncement of his selection, God took him from us. And that was why I was asked to step in. That was why I was able to come in at that young age. At the time we contested, we, we were about uh, eight people that contested. But um, I, I won the day, and uh, the, the government um, approved it. Uh, God approved it, government approved it, and Jabaro was made, and here I am today as Jabaro of Kaba. I mentioned that peripherally because I said education is our industry, it's our main industry in open land. You hardly can go to any household where they don't have graduates in open land. And like I said, most of them were trained by their parents through communal um, efforts and through their hard work, through farming, through petty trading and so on and so forth. So if we had an opportunity to choose to mention or to inform the Bari administration. What we really need now is a university. And within Okun, we have not less than, we have almost 200 uh, towns and villages, and an arable and um, fertile land which can then be turned into a suitable area that can free the people of Nigeria. We were very happy when the federal government um, built a dam that is called the Ome Dam. And we were hope hopeful that with the building of the dam, it was going to enhance agricultural development, irrigation in particular, fishing, and so on and so forth. The dam is there now, lying idle. And then our plea is that the federal government should please come down and then bring in the necessary uh, focus to enable that area function very well.
apart from it being used for agricultural purposes, it can supply drinking water to the entire segment of Okun, Okun people and even beyond as far as to the people of Okene. And it is a facility that is left there almost wasted. And it is my hope that government will direct attention towards it and then maximize its usage. You know, when we came to Kogi, you cannot push back the, the open people. The only thing they know really is education. In fact, you can only talk of a business as a new dimension to their way of life. So if I have an opportunity, I'll just appeal to the federal government to please convert one of our schools to a university, College of Education Technical to a federal university of technology, or College of Agriculture into a federal university of agriculture, or build a university that is a um, uh, that you know offers all discipline. So that is any government that can do that for this nation or this group of people. I think um, they will never forget that government. We want to seize this opportunity to appeal to open youths to continue to work hard and to ensure that the most enough energy, enough commitment and then enough civility that could make them be worthy of note in the future. I want the open people to take education very seriously because education is the bedrock of any development and except you are educated you may not be able to meet up in life and the businessmen at home and in diaspora particularly those in diaspora to come home and develop the community there is no point you building large factories in other areas and you come home to be a visitor let us develop our home. Let us develop our village towns within the land. And I pray God will give us that enablement to be able to achieve. So this is my vision of open land. Open land is endowed with natural resources in terms of uh, mineral and agricultural resources. We can we, we can grow anything here, from cassava to yams to beans to from kernel to all sorts of things. I think we are aware that uh, uh, this area, uh, Alape, has been chosen as a cassava processing center, and even we have. Other lands within open land where cassava can grow, development of the people and um, the open people. Initially, were known as uh, Oji people, but um, we saw that it was a, a wrong nomenclature for us, and um, we know our phobias. Uh, that common appellation, which is open, and we had to refer to it. Before the colonialists disengaged from Nigeria, the people of Okun were made into one division known as Kaba Division. But within that Kaba division, there were two enemies. 
we had the BIK, Bunu Ijumunkaba, Native Authority, and also the Yaba Native Authority. The Yaba Native Authority had its headquarters at um, Isonlu, while the BIK, Bunu Ijumunkaba, had its own in Kaba here. Unfortunately, when Kwara State was created and there was um, a, the demand for creation of um, more local, government, of local governments or the demand or the necessity to now have a change and even convert the nomenclature of any to local government. The Kwara State Government, rather than base our local government then, that was in the sisters, rather than base our local government on the two enemies that we had in those days, they decided to march us into one. Come away from home, across other community. Eba mi ki ile mi mo ti ke so jade If I was so a po ki agbara ya Oshushu a wo ki e ri koga You need tea in diversity Okun 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 ile mi Okun okun We give that nomenclature Oji local government. It was a policy that was detrimental to our development. While other areas were created into local government, for example, Onyu, which was a very small place, was created into local government. As large as we were then, from uh, Yamoye to Egbe were much as a local government. And so for a long time, there was um, a law in our development while other areas were progressing. Even other areas that were not made any that were not any during the colonial regime, uh, colonial government, became local governments in Kwara. Not until the military came and um, changed the order. When the military came, even I knew as small as it was, was further recreated into two local governments, where they had a new local government and of a local government. And it was from there we to we had five local governments. That is passing through all the various uh, military regimes that we had. But for the major of Kaba, the Bunu, the Jumu local government with Jagba, local government of those days, probably today, we we'll have been talking of about 10 local governments in open land. Because we still have areas where local governments are desirable. For example, in uh, Jumu, you can, you can, you can talk of uh, having an embedded local government. In Kabahia, you can talk of having a Kawapa local government. You can talk of a uh, Bunu local government. You can talk of a um, Southeast Yaba local government. You can even talk of uh, having a Gwe local government. These are areas that will have been visited if that major had not been done. So it was, a, it really retarded our progress and it is now we are trying to meet up. You can only understand what I'm saying when you now say that at the time we were one local government, it only meant that development was coming out from one single area. That single area was dishing out local government or was just about the only area center of local of, um, development 
and that was Kaba. But when we had, okay, let us take now that we have five local governments, out of that one single local government we had before. We have about five areas of um, development, five local government headquarters, and each of these local government headquarters have developed, isn't it? Today, Okun is developing, and I thank God that when I came, it was just a single local government, but today we have five local government. Yara is developing, uh, Mopa is developing, uh, Kaba is developing, uh, the other local government headquarters are developing. And even the villages, the government, the local government is now closer to the people. So I have to really congratulate the open people that I, I, I admire their efforts and the, the way they are working hard through development efforts. And also I thank the government, both state and federal, for whatever development they might have brought to these uh, areas. So development is um, gaining ground within open land and we should all work at maintaining that tempo. Having said all this, I must say that uh, I feel very happy to to be uh, to have the opportunity of serving my people. Not only serving my people, even serve, serving the open people. You see, the open people are highly educated. They are highly educated and very sensitive. Let me tell you that all over the world, the Israelis are the most difficult people to manage. And next to that are the Yoruba people. And the open people are Yorubas. But to the glory of God, peace, tranquility and security is being maintained. And I believe it's true to the to the to the assistance of God and the good people of um, open land and true to my own efforts. So when I was coming, people had fears for me. But I entered the lion's den with the, with the heart that God would be my guide and he had been and he had been so and to the glory of God open today is better has been is better than what it used to be. So and I'm very happy that I'm telling my whole story as an open man. Come away from home, across other globe community. If I was so up, ki agbaraya community. Unity in diversity. community. My name is Oba Mike, Dr. Lobayo, the Obaro of Kaba.